Alright, so now let's talk about relationships. In 2020, Tableau introduced a new methods on how to combine and connect tables together. And they called it relationships. They made it even as a default methods on how to connect tables since it is very fast and flexible. So what is relationships and how it works in Tableau? It is completely different than joins and union. If we have in the logical layer two logical tables, A and B, we can connect them at this layer using the relationships. Think of the relationships as a contract between two tables. And when Tableau uses the data from those tables, it has first to check the contract in order to understand how to generate the queries. And now it's very important to understand that once we connect the tables using relationships, the tables gonna stay separated from each others and Tableau will not create a new logical table. So everything gonna stay as it is without any changes. And here we just describe the relationships between two tables. So now in the visualization level, if we take the field F1 from table A and F4 from table B, what gonna happen? First Tableau gonna check the contract in order to understand how to generate the queries and then it gonna send the query to the first table and then it gonna send another query to the table B in order to get the data for F4. And then the data gonna be combined at the visualization level and not the logical level. All right, so now let's see how we can create relationships in Tableau. It's really easy. So we're gonna stay at the data source page and as well at the logical layer. We will not go to the physical layer. And all what we need is two tables. So let's take the orders, drag and drop it over here in the data model. And then let's take the customers. So now, as you can see, as I'm moving, there is like a noodle or relationships. So let's drag it here and Tableau going to automatically create relationships between the orders and the customers. And now how are we going to configure and set up the relationship? So let's go to the noodle over here and just click on it. And then there will be no new window or something for the setup. We're going to go to the metadata over here. If you don't see the information like this, then you can go over here and you will see like the relationships and the logical tables. So make sure you are selecting the relationship. And there is like three things that we're gonna set up at the relationship. First, it's gonna be the key. It's like the join key. It is common field between the two tables. So now, we, as you can see over here, from the left table, we have the customer ID and the right table, we have the customer ID. And Tableau did automatically understand that this field could be used as a key, which is correct. But if you want to change it, you can go over here. So we will get a list of all fields on the left table and as well you're gonna go over here you will get all the fields from the right table and you can add more fields for the key currently it is correct so i'm gonna leave it as it is and next we're gonna go to the performance options so we're gonna extend the performance options over here and we have here two things we have the cardinality and the integrity and if you leave it here as it is as a default nothing gonna go wrong you will not lose any data so you don't have to change anything here unless you want to optimize the performance so what do we have over here we have cardinality as many or one on the left side and on the right side you can define the same stuff for the integrity we have some records match and all records mass so in order to understand those stuff let's have an example all right so now we're gonna have example for the cardinality in relationships we have two tables our orders and customers there is a relationships between them and the key for the relationships is the customer id and in the cardinalities there is two options either we're gonna use many or one and in order to decide which one is the correct one we have to do data profiling data profiling means we're gonna do deep dives in the data to understand the values inside our tables and once we do data profiling it's very easy to select whether it's many or one so now what those values means many and one there is a simple rule for that we use many if there is duplicates in the key and we use one if the key is unique and does not have any duplicate inside it. So now let's check the example in order to determine whether it is many or one. So let's go to the orders over here and the customer ID. You see in those values there is duplicates. We have the customer ID once here and once here as well. And the customer ID two is twice. So those values are not unique and contains duplicates. That's why we call it a many. Let's go to the customers over here. You can see we have the customer one two, three, and that's it. So those values are unique and there is no duplicates inside it. We don't have the customer ID 
one again in the table. So that means we can specify here a one. So now let's go through all scenarios in order to understand what can happen in Tableau once you configure this. All right, so now let's run the first scenario where Tableau gonna define it as a default many to many relationship. So we have at the left side many and on the right side we have as well many. And let's say in the visualization level, we took the customer IDs from the order and the sum of all sales and then the name of the customer. All right, so now let's see how Tableau gonna work. Tableau first gonna check the relationships. It's gonna say, okay, it's many to many. It's better to check the whole tables on the left and on the right. So we're gonna start on the left side. We have the customer one. It's gonna take it over here and it's gonna sum all the sales. So since it's many, Tableau can understand I have to check the whole table. So Tableau gonna scan the whole table one by one. It's gonna say, okay, we have the sales 50. The next one is not the customer one and then go to the next it's gonna skip it and then we have again the customer id number one and it's gonna do the sum between 50 and 30. that means we're gonna have the value of 80. it is the sum of the two sales and now we're gonna go to the right side to find the name of the customers it's gonna check okay it is many so it's gonna scan the whole table for the customer id one so now the first record it's finds okay we have the customer id one it's gonna take maria over here but now tableau will not stop it's gonna scan the whole table since in the relationships it's many but it doesn't make sense because the customer id here is unique so tableau gonna check whether there is customer id one over here and then go to the next and then it didn't find anything so it's gonna stay like this and now tableau gonna proceed with the next customer we have the customer id number two we're gonna have it as the output and then we're gonna have the sum of all sales so tableau gonna scan the whole orders in order to do the sum so we have over here the 20 and then we have here 10 so the sum of that is 30 tableau gonna have at the output 30. so that's it for the left table we're gonna go to the right table Tableau gonna scan the record one by one. So the first one is not the customer ID number two. We have here a match. So John gonna be at the output. Tableau gonna scan the whole table. So it's gonna go for the three and so on. And as you can see, the output is correct using the default methods of many to many. But we have here problem with that. On the right table, Tableau is doing a full scan. So with that, we are losing performance on the right side. So it's better to optimize it where we're gonna tell Tableau if you find a customer, then that's it. You don't have to scan the whole table because we have at the maximum one record of each customer. There is no duplicates and it is unique. And now we have to tell somehow this information for Tableau. In order to do that, we can do it in the cardinality. So on the left side, it's gonna stay as many. But on the right side, we're gonna say it is one. And with that, Tableau gonna understand, okay, it is unique. We don't have to scan the whole table and we're gonna win a lot of performance. All right, so now let's see how Tableau gonna work once we have it as many to one. On the left side, nothing gonna change because we have many, so Tableau gonna scan the whole table. So for the customer one, the result gonna be the same. But now on the right side, things gonna be changed. So Tableau gonna say, okay, customer ID number one, there is a match. It's gonna take Maria as the output, but now Tableau gonna stop. Tableau will not search for the customer ID one and scan the whole table. So with that, Tableau will not be doing any unnecessary stuff and we're gonna win some performance. We're gonna go now to the customer number two over here. Same information, so Tableau gonna scan. So do we have the customer number two over here? No, so we jump to the next one. Yes, we have a match, we're gonna take John, but Tableau gonna stop as well and will not scan the next record. So as you can see, we have exactly the same output, whether you are using many to many or many to one. With many to one, we have won the performance where Tableau gonna stop the scan on the right side. All right, so now let's jump to the next scenario where we're gonna do something wrong, where we're gonna say, okay, the customer ID on the left side is unique and we're gonna put the value of one. And on the right side, it doesn't matter. Let's have many, for example. So now we are telling Tableau on the left side, the customer ID is unique, so you don't have to scan the whole table. And we're gonna have the same example over here. So let's see what's gonna happen on the left side. Tableau gonna start with the first customer, say, okay, customer ID one. The sum of sales is now 50 because I don't have to scan the whole table. So it's gonna stop at the first three chords and the output gonna be 50. So now on the right side, once we are saying many here, it doesn't matter. The result will gonna be correct. We're gonna have Maria, but Tableau gonna scan the whole table. So the performance gonna be bad. Now we're gonna jump to the next customer. We have the customer number two. So Tableau gonna have it at the output. And here again, the same problem. Tableau gonna say, okay, we have the sale 20. 
the customer ID is unique. We will not find it again in the same table. I don't have to scan the whole table. So Tableau gonna take the value 20 and gonna put it at the output without checking the other values. And here on the right side, it doesn't matter. We have John, which is correct, but it's gonna scan the whole table. So as you can see, if you make mistake here in the cardinalities, you might have some problems at the output where we're gonna have some missing data and wrong informations. All right, so now let's run the last scenario where we have on the left side one, and on the right side as well one. We're gonna get exactly the same output because we have it wrong on the left side. The only good thing here is that on the right side, Tableau gonna stop the scan once it find a match. So it will not scan the whole table. So at the output, we're gonna get exactly the same informations and here we have one to one. All right, so now let's quickly summarize. On the left side, we have two criteria, the correctness and the performance. Correctness is always way more important than the performance. Let's start with the first scenario. We have many to many relationships. As you can see, the output was correct, but the performance was bad since Tableau doing unnecessary full table scan on the right side. So that's why I'm gonna give it okay for the correctness and not okay for the performance. For the next scenario, we have many to one relationship. The output was okay, so it was correct. We're gonna give it okay. And the performance was okay since Tableau stops the scans once it finds a match. So that's why we're gonna win a lot of performance and we're gonna give it an okay. Let's jump to the third one. We have one to many relationships. As you can see, the output was not okay. This was not correct. We are missing data, so we're gonna give it not correct and the performance was bad because on the right side we are doing unnecessary scans so that means it was the worst scenario over here and then the last one we have one to one relationship the output was not correct and not okay but the performance was okay since on the right side we are not doing any unnecessary scans but to be honest correctness is way more important than the performance and that's why Tableau always recommend to stay at many to many relationships if you are not sure because you're always gonna get correct answers at the output but if your data is big you will get some bad performance so if you want to have like good performance you have to invest time in analyzing your data doing data profiling to understand is it many is it one and then change it but you have to be sure about your data otherwise you will get wrong informations at your visualizations and that's really bad so that means for this example the safe way to do it to stay at many to many relationships but the professional one is to have many to one relationships to get good performance but this is not always a scenario just imagine we switch the tables between customers and orders so customers is left and orders is right then one to many relationships gonna be the correct correct one. So be careful here with the sites. All right, everyone. So now let's understand the integrity options in Tableau. Each relationship has two sides, the left table and the right table. When we are changing the settings of the integrity, we limit which joins can happen in the visualization. So here we have two options, some record match and all record match. And with that, we have four scenarios. First, we can choose some record match in both left and right tables. And if we do that, then all types of joins are possible in the visualization. We have inner, left, right and full join. But now if we choose all record match on the left and some record match on the right. So what can happen now? We are limiting the types of joins to only two types, inner and right join. And the next one is gonna be the opposite. So we have some record match on the left and all record match on the right. What can happen again here, we limit the types of joins to only two types, the inner and left join. And in the last scenario, if we choose all record match on both sides, the left and the right, then here we limit Tableau to only one type of join, the inner join. So as you can see, it's very similar to joins. We are just defining how Tableau should work. When we use some record match, we allow more types of joins. And when we use the option or record match, then we are limiting Tableau with the types of join. And here it's very important to understand that we have a trade-off. If you use or record match and go down this path, you will likely experience better performance but you will increase the risk of losing data. But if you choose to use some record match and you go up, you will ensure the completeness and the flexibility, but you are sacrificing some resources and performance. And Tableau team here decided to go with the first scenario where you have on the left and the right some record match. 
And I can understand that because it's more important to have completeness and flexibility more than performance. Let's have a look at our data. So here we have customers that didn't order anything. So the customer number three didn't order anything over here and we don't have a match of it. So we can say some records matches like the one and two are matching on the left side, but some other records does not match. So we don't have an order from the customer ID number three. So that means in our database, we could have customers in the customer table that didn't order anything. So the correct option over here is some records matches. Now let's analyze the orders. As you can see, we have the customer ID number one, we find it in the customers two as well and so on. So we can see that all the records or all the customers IDs in the orders has a match from the customers. Well, that means we can select all records match. We don't have, for example, customer ID 4 over here, which does not have a match on the right side. So that means in our database, all orders should come from our customers and we should not have any order without a known customer. So after the analysis, we can say on the left side on the orders, we have always a matching record. So we're going to select all records matches, but on the right side, we might have customers that didn't order anything. Then we can say some records matches. If we do it like this, we can prevent Tableau from doing any extra stuff by analyzing the nulls. Like in SQL, if you have full auto join, you will get like huge amount of data. And sometimes if you're using inner join or left join and so on, you will get better performance. So if you know exactly what is going on in your data, then select the correct integrity. Otherwise, just leave it as a default. Some records matches on the left and on the right. You will be safe, you will get correct answers. Alright, so now back to Tableau. Relationships are really easy. We just have to drag those two tables and Tableau can create the relationships between them. Just get the key between the relationships correct and everything gonna be fine and leave those stuff as a default. But if you want to be like more professional and get better performance in Tableau, you have to do data profiling and then select the correct one if you are 100% Sure. So in this example, the orders over here has many in the customer IDs, but we have on the right side one for the customers. And then for the integrity on the orders or records matches because all orders has a customer ID in the customers table, but we might have some customers that didn't order anything. So I'm going to leave it as some records matches. And that's it. That is relationships in Tableau. All right. So that's all about the very important concepts of the relationships and how it works. Next, we will learn very unique methods, the data blending in Tableau. And if you like my content and you want to support the channel, then I really appreciate it if you support, like, and comment. This is really gonna help the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.